we have maybe one problem. We have something called liquid junction potential. If we have a lot of junction potential, remember last time we talked about cell with liquid junction and cell with our liquid junction. We categorize this because it turns out that liquid junction affect the potential that we can read. And if you have the contact between two different solutions, for example, for example, this one, you need you have the sample solution here. You have the indicator electrode, which may have some solution here, and you have reference electrode with some solution here. You're going to have at least two junction potential circle here as the gray square ellipse here. This is our liquid junction. And why liquid junction give you the potential? So let's consider this. Consider that you have the reference electrode which have the membrane. And this membrane is dividing two solutions. The first solution is the 0.1 molar hydrochloric. The second solution is 0.01 molar hydrochloric. So you have something unequal between these two phase. So the hydrochloric gonna want to diffuse from this one to this one, right? It wants to uh, move itself from the left to the right, right? Because like basically like you, you want to stir the concentrate solution. It gonna have to like move from the high concentrated one to the low concentrated region one. So the point one molar hydrochloric want to move from the right to, uh, from the left to the right. But the problem is that hydrochloric acid is actually proton and chloride. You can see this. It has proton and chloride, and of course, the 0.1 molar hydrochloric gonna have more proton and more chloride. So, what's gonna happen is that proton and chloride from the left is gonna move to the right. It's gonna migrate or diffuse to the right. Proton is gonna migrate from left to right, and chloride is gonna migrate from the left to right as well to make the concentration kind of the same. But the problem is that proton carry the positive charge chloride carry the negative charge and proton is smaller than chloride right proton is the first element and chloride is maybe like 17 elements so proton is smaller than chloride so protons can move faster than chloride proton move faster than chloride chloride move slower because it's larger so it turns out that proton move faster. So it's like, it's gonna be like more relatively positive here because proton come first and chloride comes later. So it turned out that this size is gonna be like a little bit negative. And because now you have something positive here, something negative here, and you are, so you are creating the separation of the charge. And separation of the charge is basically potential, if you remember physics. So this is why if you have membrane separating between two portions of the solution with different species or different concentration, then you're going to generate the liquid, something called liquid junction potential occurring from this charge difference. And the symbol for the liquid junction potential is Ej. So this one is basically EJ or liquid junction potential. Any question on the liquid junction potential? Basically, you have different uh, solutions and you have ions that can migrate uh, differently and protons migrate faster than chloride. That's why the right hand side seems to be like more positive than the red left hand side. So you create charge difference and that's why you have liquid junction potential. And why do we care about this? Because we are talking before that the liquid, the E cell here, the volumeter readout is equal to E indicator minus E reference. But now you have E junction. Now you have E junction. And in real life, you cannot really calculate E junction. You cannot really calculate E junction. So now your E cell is uncertain. You cannot calculate it from theory anymore because yeah we know the e indicator that's going to be like some form of the equation 
E reference gonna be constant, so it's fine. But now your E junction is not gonna be like quantitatively determined anymore. So your E cell is ruined, basically. So that's why we care about junction potential. But now let's consider this table. Let's consider this table. There are some uh, something that we can predict the junction how to predict the junction potential. For example, let's consider the first and the second one. The first and the second one. We have hydrochloric and we have potassium chloride. It turns out that potassium chloride junction has much less junction potential. For hydrochloric, it is plus 40. For potassium chloride, it is only one millivolt. This is because like uh, proton is smaller, chloride is much larger, right? So the potential difference is a lot. But now potassium chloride has relatively same size. So the potential is difference gonna be that not gonna be that much. So this, this is why potassium chloride has much less junction potential than hydrochloric junction. Something like that. And to end the class, I think, let's do the first example. So this example asks you to explain why the junction potassium chloride is, uh, has the much lower junction potential than the hydrochloric acid. Basically, I just explained you like a minute ago. So you have the junction of potassium chloride and junction of hydrochloric. And the potassium chloride has basically size kind of similar. Proton is much smaller than chloride. So for the junction, so for the junction, uh, uh, proton can move, proton can diffuse or migrate a lot faster than chloride. So this is gonna be really positive and this is gonna be really negative. So this is why it has high junction potential. But for potassium and chloride, it kind of moves relatively the same because the size kind of the same. So if it has positive here, it's not, not, not gonna be that much. If it has negative here, it's not gonna be that much. So that's why because of the similar size and similar uh, migration properties, the junction potential is low. So this is how, how to explain why uh, the junction potential of potassium chloride is much smaller than hydrochloric. Yeah, I just have the image here as well. So I should clean the thing. Yep. <coughs> See that proton and chloride is much different. Potassium and chloride is kind of the same. And there's one way, although junction potential is ruin our analysis, there's one way to minimize the junction potential. Of course, one way you have seen here is you use the salt, you use the salt with the similar properties or similar size like potassium chloride as your electrolyte. But you can, where are you gonna put it? <clears throat> You're gonna put it in something called salt bridge here. You put something in the salt bridge. For example, this is the reference, one of the reference electrode. We're gonna talk about it later next Tuesday. And turns out that it has salt bridge at the end. It has salt bridge at the end. And this salt bridge can uh, fill with the high concentration of high mobility electrolyte, such as three molar KCL. And of course, potassium and chloride has different migration properties. So that's why the junction potential is minimized. And here. For example, like in the in this cell with liquid junction, the copper zinc thing, you put the junk, uh, the salt bridge as well with the high concentration electrolyte to minimize the junction potential. So in this case, in in this original diagram, that's why I put here the extra one porous membrane with salt bridge. So most of the reference electrode gonna have the salt bridge with high concentration KCL, so that it minimizes the junction potential. So even you have E cell like this, E cell is equal to reference electrode potential, uh, indicator electrode potential minus reference electrode potential and plus the junction potential. Now your EJ or junction potential is very low. So it's fine now. You can just approximate it with this one. 
And this is the purpose of the, the sulfates in the electrochemical cell. Uh, 